Thanks to the Lord for allowing us to have another broadcast over this platform. The Lord has allowed us to come together one more time. I want to get right into the message so I don't run out of time. I've got a lot of information to cover. We're going to get right back into it with this conversation we have, this black folk conversation that we've been having. We're going to get right back into it. So let's open up with a word of prayer and let's get into the conversation. Heavenly Father, Lord Jehovah, maker and creator, we give you all the thanks and the honor and the praise, and we lift up holy hands praying to you. Those of us in the house of faith, Lord, pray and continue to reach out to the lost and those that are seeking and looking for the way out of this untoward generation. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray. Amen. We were right in Matthew 23, and I was talking about these whited sepulchers. Sepulcher is just another word for a tomb, and we can relate it today as a casket, where they didn't have the same tas caskets that we had. They had 
grave sites or sepulchers that look very good, just like we have caskets. Some people have gold caskets that they lay themselves in. And it looks real good on the outside. They decorate it and they put flowers and all kinds of things on it. But inside is nothing but dead, a dead body in there. That person's not in there. That soul's not in there anymore. It's nothing but dust in there, really. Decaying flesh in there. And I wanted to relate that to the way, the attitude that our community or the, the so-called black community, people classified as black, have. The outside looks good. You remember some of us are very sharp. But again, the world gets their trends, their style, their swag, if you want to say, off of black folks. Let's just, cut, let's just stop playing around with it. Yes, they get their swag off us. When they go to advertise clothes or something, they go to us. People that classify as black. And then they sell it to the world. And I'm talking about the ones here in America. And I ain't talking about over in uh, Zimbabwe or uh, Africa or even on the, in the Caribbeans. I'm talking about right here. They get, get their style from. So this nation and this world really looks at us for style. But is it a badge of honor? Is it something we should be flaunting? Is it something that God say, says that, look, this, you, hey, you're a beautiful people. Show the world how beautiful you are. Is, this, is that godly? Well, the scriptures say contrary, that we're supposed to go out and just, you know, flaunt our beauty. See, because that beauty and that that swag and all that, you know, everybody looking at us, a lot of people get a proud look off of that, that attention that everybody uh, mimicking. And want, there are a lot of people that want to be like you. We don't know that. They won't say it outright, but want to imitate us. Because the natural gifts that are given. And sometimes that can begin, give a proud look. So back in Matthew 23 and 27, let's see how Jesus was again talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. Multitude listened to this message though. And we're at the eight woes again. Woe unto you scribes, Pharisees, hip, call them hypocrites. Hypocrite is an actor. And look, I got a message that's coming right behind this one, you know, relating to the Black Exploitation 2023 that has to do with hypocrites, actors, the world of Hollywood, all the entertainment, and what's going on. And I'm, I'm, I've got that brewing up right now. Hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchers, tombs, caskets, which are indeed beautiful outward, but inward, full of dead men's bone and, and uncleanness. See, here's where the sharpness gets. Here's where the, the rebuke gets. Here's, here's where the woe gets. A lot of us like to clean out the outside of the cup, but inside we're full of dead man's bones. Again, people all, we living in the hood, and we struggling. And instead of humbling yourself, look, how can we all get out of this struggling? No, we want to flaunt it like we got something. We, I'm, I'm in the hood, but I'm, you know, I got a, I got a Benz 190, or whatever. Yeah, I got an E class or whatever you want to say now. I got a G wagon, and I'm in the hood. Well, if you got this much money, why are you still in the hood? You're not faking it to anybody. Let me give you an example. One of the very few things, very few things. I have good to say about the high school I went to, which is a racist high school and had, well, not not all the people, not all the students. I'm talking about the, te the bigot teacher. Shout out, Mr. Sermsack. But shout out to, uh, I mean, I'm saying one of the good, few things I can say about Rancocas Valley High School, the high school I went to in Mount Holly, New Jersey, is that we had a class called Driver's Ed. We had a program really called Driver's Education. And it took you from all the way from the book learning and actually leading you and act, they would actually have the test right there in, in the uh, high school where you could take the test 
Sometimes people failed it and you had to take it more than one time. But you could, they would, you would have the class and then you would take the test right there in, in, in high school. Well, that's the book learning. The book, you still can't drive. You can't drive, you don't know the left from the right. You know, you don't know what, what a truncated triangle is. You don't know double odds. You don't know, but you know, you know, book learning, you know. And you can pass the test and you can do good on that test, but you still can't drive. See, you don't know the real thing. On the outward, it looks like, hey, you know, you know about driving, but you don't know how to drive. But then they had a next class was a up was a was a that's cl class above. Once you've got your you pass the test now, and you're actually able to have a permit, or actually in the stage when you're about to get your permit, you had a class called driver simulation. And it was with a pseudo car that they had some kind of fabrication. And they had a screen that looked like uh, an actual driving street. Like you were out actually on the street. They had the car that you sit in and you could even shift gears back then when you had manuals. You uh, you could shift the gears and you can do the turn signals and all that. And it would almost simulate like you're actually uh, driving in a car. But you still couldn't drive. See, on the outside it looked like, hey, she can... That person can turn and knows the turn signals and follow in all directions. And we can see the obstacles coming and, you know, the baby walking across the street. You need to step on the brakes and it can grade you based on the way you looked. Now, but you still can't drive. You see, you did all those things. You, you passed the test. You know the you know the lingo and all that. You know the rules and all the regulations. Now you went through simulations, and I learned to identify things by driving, and I, I learned to, to push on the brakes, and uh, you know, I learned how, when to shift the gears. Driver simulation, simulation. All this I'm prepared. I'm prepared, right? But they had the final course right before you took the test called behind the wheel behind the wheel so you did all that and you all oh, i'm ready to drive i'm ready to drive but you got behind the wheel and you were like a deer in headlights oh wow now this is the real thing see that's the difference you can do all that practicing, and this is for you, the people who uh, put so much emphasis on academia. You can go all that, do all that school and all that learning and all that simulation and all you video game players. But when it comes to the real thing, it's a whole different league. See, the people that are really experts on this in this world aren't the academia, and I have nothing wrong with getting education, but it's what education you get. But once you actually get to do the real work, that's the ones that are really the experts, the one doing the work. Not the ones that have all that book knowledge. Book knowledge is good, but it doesn't prepare you for actually doing the only thing. This is somebody who can look. They can tell you about, they can sit back and, they, uh, uh, and then they're a trainer and they can train other people how to throw a punch and, you know, they go by the science. This is the way you get the most power out of it and all that. But that person getting the ring and can't fight a lick. Why? You can't simulate the real thing. What they say? Ain't nothing like the real thing. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Tammy Terrell. No. Ain't nothing like the real thing. So as long as you try to fake it, as long as you just clean up the outside of the cup, you're never going to progress. And if you never progress, we never progress. See, they have certain individuals people want to throw out, Oprah Winfrey and all that. But still, Dr. Claude Anderson says that still, 2022, 2023, the people that are so-called classified as black, in the United States. Listen to this statistic. Listen up close. Out of all the people that are classified as black in the United States, we own less than, less than one half of 1% of the wealth in the United States. You did, no, I didn't study. Less than one half of 1% of the wealth of the United States are, is owned by people that are classified as black in the United States. Yet, we are the number one consumers as a group. How does that 
how, how, how do you do the math on that? Yes, and that includes, but for somebody out there, that includes all your so-called black billionaires, uh, Tyler Scary and Oprah Winfrey and, and uh, Scary as uh, Scale King and all of them. Uh, it includes them. Kanye, it, Jay, it, you put them in there too. And we still own less than one half of one percent of all the wealth. Now you say, what about these billionaires? Doesn't that rock the scale? No, because look, uh, most of the wealth is in what? Corporations. Corporations are, we think of a big business and we think of a building. No, but big, big corporations are owned by people, stockholders. Now these, that's where the wealth is. Collaboration, not individuals. We have a few individuals that have lots and lots of money, but, but mainly the wealth is in these corporations and they're owned by people, collaborations. Behind the scenes, people you might not ever see. People not bling blinging. People not out there showing everything. Now they have things. They don't look. They don't need a G wagon. You know why? Because they got a jet. <laughs> they don't need to drive. They don't need to be. Uh, uh, they, they don't need to have a gangster link. They got somebody. They got a chauffeur. They don't need to show it. They got it. You can't fake in front of them. They'll laugh at you. Oh, look at them. They, they look at you like a dressed up pig. Yes. They look like they look at you like a pig with lipstick on and laugh at you. Look at that cute little pig. Or you know how some of them dress up their uh, animals, dress up their dog, and put like uh, sports jerseys on them and all that. That's what they look at you like. You're, my pet, look at my pet. My pet acting like a real person. They acting like a real rich person. <laughs> Ain't they funny? That's the way they look at you. But yet in the hood, oh man, we, we big willy style in the hood with this. But Jesus says, and hey, look in verse 28. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Some of you look holy. And some of you get in what you call church, your churches, and you, you, you look righteous, and you look all upright, and you looking real good. You're looking real sharp. Got your hair done, hair done, nails done, everything done. And, and but still, uh, but uh, you're righteous under men, but within now God's the judge. Within you're full of hypocrisy, iniquity. Got a lot going on inside. Got Uncle Chester Molester. Got a lot of things going on in the community that we hiding up. We hiding behind a fair clothing. Now James too, and I don't have time to go in that. Talks about the God is no respect of the person, but we are. Look, look, we'll judge people based on the way what shoes they got on. Oh, he ain't got no money because look at the shoes he got on. Oh, I can tell. I can tell a good man by what shoes he wear. How many of you say, come on, raise your hand. How many of you really say, I can tell a, I can tell a good man uh, or a man is, uh, his etiquette by the way he dressed? No, you can't. A lot of players know that. You know, a lot of pimps wear good clothes. And pimp, next to pedophile, below pedophile, a pimp is one of the lowest individuals you can have on this earth. Low character. They dress good, though. They look nice. They bling blinging. But that's the same one that put his hands on a woman, beat a woman, and let her do all the work. He's unmanly because he lets the woman do the work while he sits back. But within, you are full of hypocrisy and with iniquity. Let's go to Matthew 6. Go back to Matthew 6. Because there's some out there saying, ain't nothing wrong, ain't nothing wrong with having, wearing nice things. And I, did I say that? I said priding yourself on those things. But you know what's good in God's eye? Modesty. One thing that a lot of the, I would say, other religions might, maybe, Buddhists, Muslim have, is they have this modesty thing down. You know the difference? You couldn't tell the difference between the lowest pauper versus Osama bin Laden. They wear the same thing. 
Osama bin Laden, uh, I think his dad, it was Kareem Hussein, they were multi-billionaires, had like $100 billion, but still dressed like everybody else. Didn't distinguish himself like that. Jesus didn't distinguish himself in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus, Judas had to identify him to the betrayers. The one, the prisoners, the one to lock him up. He had, he had to portray him what with a kiss because they didn't know who he was. They was all, all the same. But yet, in the churches, we bling bling, and you can tell who the pastor is. The one with all the gold, the one who got the best uh, 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 seat, the one who get the best chicken. You can you can tell who he is. The one with his head slicked back. That's the pastor in a lot of these churches. He, he distinguishes himself from everybody else. Listen, Matthew 6 and verse 24. Let's, this is, let me get the theme. And let's get the context of what he's talking about. No man can serve two masters. Well, you can't serve your clothes, yourself, your clothes, trying to impress other black folks. You ain't impressing Mr. Charlie. You trying to impress other black folks. But, but why? Because money is your, you made money your master and having things your master. No man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he would hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Now, that's the thing. That's the backdrop of what he's about to talk about. And this is just a continuation of the same for it. And you say, I'm worried about what I'm going to wear. I can't figure out what I'm going to wear to this club, church, show. And you're worried about matching, and you're worried about what somebody else wearing. Look what she got on. Uh, uh, look at look at his shoes. Oh, oh, he don't know how to dress. Oh, oh, look at look at this shirt he got on. Look at it. He look like a farmer. Okay. Let's see verse twenty-five. Jesus talking on the Sermon on the Mount, talk, teaching his disciples that are going to enter into the kingdom, teaching against those hypocrites he was just talking about in Matthew twenty-three. Same crowd he's talking about. But the masses are there, but he's teaching his disciples who are going to enter into his kingdom. So this is what I call a kingdom teaching of Jesus. Therefore, I say unto you, not to everybody, I say unto you. Therefore, you want to be godly? Therefore, I say unto you. Person that calling yourself a Christian, I say unto you. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought of your life. What is he talking about? Go out and kill yourself or abuse yourself? No, he's not talking about that. He's going to explain it. He's saying, in other words, when you're thinking about mammon, you're thinking about your life. Remember the back? That's why I went through it over verse 24. You can't serve God and mammon. When you're thinking about your life, you're thinking about worldly things. What I'm going to wear. What I'm going to eat. How I'm going to look. How I'm going to impress other people. See, that's what you're thinking about. That's your life. Take no thought of your life. Now he's going to explain what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor of your body, what you shall put on. Now, that person out there saying, oh, ain't nothing wrong with putting this on. And on. But why are you putting so much effort? Again, it's about your priority. Jesus said, not going, he's not talking about going around naked, but he's saying, don't put so much of priority on your clothes. These things are what I'm going to eat. How am I going to provide these worldly things? God got you. Listen, is it not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment or clothes? Is it, that's what I'm going to black folks, isn't it more than that? What you're eating? Where you're going out? You're going out to Red Lobster or, or whatever whatever shops, uh, restaurants they got now. Uh, hibachi or whatever, I don't know. I don't I don't eat out. I very, very seldom eat out. Isn't, isn't life worse than what? Where's your priority at? Now, you say you put Jesus first, but you're worrying about, look, I like to go out and I like to go to the restaurant. I, I like to travel. I like to do this and I like to do that. Travel for what? Many of us, when we think about riches and, and serving money, 
Do you know? Go look. Next time that you thinking about going to on a uh, on a vacation, and you want to go to the Caribbeans, you want to go to Brazil, you want to go to Italy. Go and say, look, I don't want to stay on none of the resorts. I want to stay where the people stay at. Find me a place where I can rent and stay where the people at. Go to Jamaica. All my Jamaican buddies out, friends out there. Go to Jamaica. And I don't want to stay on the resorts. I want to stay where the people are. And see how different it is than what they show you on TV. She the Go to some of these uh, uh, places and countries where they don't have uh, running plumbing. Where they don't have electric grid grid at night. That's it. Ain't no you ain't no work. Ain't doing nothing because ain't no electric grid. You can know, light a fire or candle. That's about it. So they look at you. If you go there, they look at you as rich. Look, rich is not what well, is it? I went over before the difference between wealthy and rich. Rich is just having more than necessary to take it. It just means excess. Just like a cake have too much sugar, it's rich in sugar. It has excess. Doesn't mean to have abundance to give to everybody. You give it to every other meal. It means it just has enough more sugar than it needs. The more have more you. Uh, many of us have more than we actually need. That's why you go go look in your closet and all the different shoes and clothes you have that, that you can give away. You could give away. You got many jackets you never wore. You got a lot of clothes you never wore. Some of you can go. Three months without ever wearing the same thing. Some you can go half a year without wearing the same thing. That's that's to, and a lot of people in the world that's rich. But look, we have focused so much in this country on that because this country we lived on is a land of milk and honey. And regardless of the way they got there, I know black people built it. We it was built on our backs in slavery. Regardless of how they got there. It's there. And the Lord allowed it to happen. See? Yeah, we built this thing, but guess what? Psalms 127 says, except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain. So all this building that the United States did, they built it illegally, and they built it with blood money, and they built it with blood, sweat, and tears of slave. They built it that way, but yet, this country is coming down. Because the Lord didn't build it. Everything that, the, every plant that the heavenly father every tree that the heavenly father hadn't planted is going to be rooted up and that's what's going to happen to this country going to be it started already see and, and, and verse 26 uh G jesus says behold the fowls of the air and the, for they sow not neither do they reap nor they gather in barns yet your heavenly father Feed them. Are ye not much better than they? That's the question I want to ask. Are you not met better than they? Why do we place so much emphasis on, again, the outer cup and showing everybody how good we look? Listen, listen. Look, come on, black folks. I, I'm, I'm, God has already made us beautiful. Our natural self, beautiful. God has already made you that way. The world knows this. And they try to downplay. The reason why they try to get into the psyche, they had to get into the psyche. When we talk about chattel slavery, we're not talking about slavery going back. I'm talking about chattel slavery. The way we had to get into the psyche of the slaves, because they had to destroy the mentality of the greatness that God has already blessed them with. Because if they thought that, and they knew the things that were actually in the scriptures, we say we are mighty people. God made us wonderful. God made us beautiful and natural. Re made, ready, ready made. Naturally beautiful. You can take the same thing. Look. You can take the same piece of article of clothing and put it on somebody else and it wouldn't look it look normal. But on another on us, it just fly. Just because the way you are. But they had to tell you that others are better than you. And that's why they got us wanting to go around looking like, you know, uh, 
Sally Struthers and all. They want to look like uh, uh, what you know, you know, Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston looked like a broomstick with a a broomstick, basically a broomstick with lipstick, and people want to look like that, thin, stringy hair with lipstick. That's your image of beauty, Aaron Brockovich. I forget her real name. You want to look like that? That's your image of beauty. You know the. I was just thinking. If you took Mona Lisa, you know Mona Lisa, that picture of Mona Lisa? If you took Mona Lisa and drew a beer on it, it looked just like that so-called Jesus a lot of people, churches have in, they, uh, in their building. It looked just, or some, some of you have in your house, that so-called picture of Jesus. You took Mona Lisa and put a beer in my, it looked like the same thing. Or health to skelter. The same thing. See, you see how the, our minds are so messed up into these earthly things, we have to get off these other things. First, God, Jesus told us in Matthew uh, 23 to first clean up the inside of the cup. First, take care of what take care of the godly things. Modesty is the other. We we can be. It's nothing wrong with being modest. You know the idea of a where idea of uniform came. The idea of uniform came because there were some there were people that all gathered together as one in a church, in an organization. But you could tell the different classes of people, and people would treat people different based on their class. The farmer would come in from the field with his suspenders and all that, and in the choir you could tell who was the rich person. And all that. So they had uniforms they put over them. They all looked the same. And they looked uniform. They looked together. And they were all treated the same. That's where the idea of uniforms came from. A team, a team, a sports team, have a uniform so they're all supposed to be, look, I can tell and identify my teammates. The Army, the same thing. We're all neat. We're all groomed. But we're all uniformed. How are we going to get uniform if we try to keep trying to distinguish ourselves but I'm greater than you because the way I dress, because the way I look greater than you, rather than I am. Look, the world even says the cream rises to the top, and maybe that's a bad analogy. But in other words, what the, what it's saying is that, and eventually, what's real is going to come to the top. The ones that really listen, that nerd that you saw in high school. You know what that nerd's doing right now? He's a senior executive. Executive, or he's an entrepreneur. He's making money. The one that you put down, but that one that I'm not just talking about that one that was just silly, nerd, or just didn't know anything. I'm not talking about the unsmart. I'm talking about that one that was a bookworm. That one was that one was focused, and he wasn't as focused on being fly. See, and the boy, young kids. Before you got all that financial responsibility and you have to have your four Ps, before that, you could just get by on being fly. But so many of us have learned that being fly don't last that long. When the bill starts piling up, when the, when the, when the, when the strong man is trying to bust in your house, when, when the cars and the problems start happening, the house, the roof start uh, leaking. <laughs> That, that good looks don't go nowhere. Don't do nothing. You being fly and funny don't go nowhere. Remember in the, in the movie of Biggie, Biggie Smalls had, uh, and Biggie Smalls was a person that was supposed to be fly, and he was dressed regardless of the way he looked and whatever you say, but he, was, he had swag. Before he was rich. Before he was famous, he had swag, and he had it his way with the ladies because he had a good, what they call mouthpiece. See, you can get by with that before, uh, when you were young. When you were young and 19, just coming out, you can get by with that. Oh, yeah, you drug it, deal on drugs. You can get by with that. But what Faith Evans learned once she married him, and once that lifestyle came, and once the bills started coming up, he learned, look, you being funny and talking about boom, 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 and that gets old real quick. That person becomes an annoyance to you. 
When you will stop being a child and grow up. When I was a child, I thought as a child, understood as a child, I reasoned as a child. But when I became a man, I put away child with sways and start working on my peace. Perfector, perfect, protector, provider, problem solver, producer. That's what we got to work on the inside of the cup. But first of all, you got to be a man of God. You got to come to the knowledge of God. You got to obey God and get behind him and let him direct you. Hear and believe in the gospel. Repent on your sins. Confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson that I was able to give out of the scriptures. May eyes be open and ears be open to your truth. In Jesus' name we humbly pray. Amen.